welcome everyone to another episode of What Ikes at Jersey Stories, where we uh, go over stories and, and Jersey and how they come together. Anyway, I'm your host, Nick Franco. <laughs> With Hi, me? I'm, I'm Pete Riario. Excellent, excellent. And and, and in, in, in the ether in the background is is, is uh, our, our our friend uh, uh, Christian and and Bain. So I, I'm, I'm sure he's hanging out there somewhere. Mm-hmm. But uh, this week. What what we'd like to discuss with you, um, the, Jer- Jersey's known for a great many things. Uh, last episode, we were going over a lot of the random facts. This week, we're going to uh, focus our facts a little bit. We're going to talk about some of the companies that actually sprang from New Jersey. Um, I'm, I'm sure some of you are familiar with many of these companies. Well, what we're going to focus basically on two but there are many 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 that were uh formed here in the great garden state um what do you got to say on this there pete what i gotta say is jersey mics we've left them out what happened there oh yes jersey mics no i actually well yeah i I did get mine in (laughs) we switched podcasts for a second (laughs) we are now known as not okay Bane would like to apologize for the butt dial. Uh, he... <laughs> it, it's okay, Bane. To, to sow chaos and confusion. No, no, no. Bane is, Bane is feeling under the weather. So oh, he I'm just sorry, assumed Bane. you guys was not okay, but it's okay. <laughs> it's okay, Bane. As long as you're okay now. I am so sorry. Oh, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> Even Batman has a bad day. Uh, oh did you really just reference it? I'm triggered. I'm going away. <laughs> I had to bring up the Dark Knight. Yes. Uh, but uh, anyway, you, you, you were saying about Jersey Mike's, and I, I was about to make a bad joke about, yes, I did get my, my microphones uh, at uh, Garden, uh, Garden uh, what was that called? Guitar Center in New Guitar Jersey. Center. But anyway. Unless, uh, you know, did Jersey Mike st- start on the Isle of Jersey in um uh, where was that? <laughs> in off, in, off the England. UK coast. Yeah, uh, I I don't think they did. I think they actually did start in the uh, in the Gar- Greek Garden State. But yeah, uh, no, they did. But 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 yeah. But we will we'll, we'll, you know they, they are one of but many uh, companies that have uh, formed in this great state. Um, I you 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 got one that uh actually I think most people will know. Am, am yeah, I saying? Prudential actually is uh what I was going to talk about today about how they started in uh, Newark, New Jersey and give like, ah, this, like you know, some history rock. on them. You want me to start uh, Nick with all this? Yeah, I, actually, why don't we start with Prudential? Yeah. You know, like let, let's get a piece of the rock. Yeah. Why not? Uh, the, that is their slogan. So yeah, we, we know them to be one of the largest insurance companies in, in North America. Then they also do securities, investments, uh, real estate, home mortgages. Um, it was started by a Yale dropout named John F. Dryden, uh, 1873. Now, he had originally named it wow. the Widows and Orphans Friendly Society. That's a great name. But, um, I was going to say, very, very catchy. You know, It rolls off the tongue. It, it could fit on a bumper sticker if you had like one of those <laughs> old station wagons. But, you know, this was 1873. I don't think uh, Henry Ford was I don't was think they were around, around yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then two years later, they changed the company name to the Prudential Friendly Society. But they settled on Prudential, uh, the official name, 1877. Um, Does it say why they settled on Prudential? Yeah, you know, like is, is no, I don't know. Maybe they, just, they wanted maybe to shorten it, right, and uh, <laughs> let it roll <laughs> off the tongue. Prudential. <laughs> is, is Prudential a, uh, an acronym for uh, you know like uh, the, the widows and uh, <laughs> what was it again? <laughs> uh, though it was the uh, Widows and Orphans Friendly Society. Ah. They served they served ice cream in the back too. Um, you know. <laughs> But, uh, you know, what happened was that um, he wanted to, you know, offer um, it was low cost industrial insurance for laborers. And he his aim was not to serve the wealthy or the middle class, but the working class. So now he was unable to find any backers in New England or New York to build the company he envisioned. So what does he do? He crosses the Hudson, goes to Newark, New Jersey, and he convinced several Newark uh, natives there to purchased thirty thousand dollars of capital stock um you know and his aims were 
relief in sickness, an accident for people who didn't have a lot, uh, pensions for old age, adult, and um, infant burial funds. These are goals that um, corresponded closely to the needs of the diverse ethnic groups that were immigrating at the time to the United States. Wow. Um, now, what happened was like the company's first directors kind of failed to recognize his vision. So they went through several until the directors finally elected who else but John Dryden, <laughs> their own guy. <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, it's like uh, who, who, who else would better uh, fit, would the, uh, best, right? fit the, the, the um, not the eyesight, what, what is it? Yeah, the, the original vision of uh, John Dryden, but uh, John Dryden or himself. Queen's one vision. <laughs> one vision. Yeah. So he served in that position for 30 years and you know, under his leadership, um, like in 1885, they had 422,671 policies, uh, 1905, 6.49 million, just to show you the growth Damn. that was there. You know, their assets went from 1.03 million in 1885 to 102 million in 1905. Um, he opened a branch in Canada. Um, and then, you know, in 1896, is, this is where you had started off uh, the show with was um, the advertising department created their longstanding logo and slogan, which was the Rock of Gibraltar, accompanied by the words, end quote, the Prudential has the strength of Gibraltar. Ah. Gibraltar, yeah. I, again, it rolls off the tongue. <laughs> it does. Yeah, so he <laughs> dies, um, Dryden dies in 1911, his son. It, it, um, it wasn't from the, the, the advertising logo though, right? I think the the rock, like you know, the the rock of Gibraltar, it it landed on him somehow, oh, just okay. <laughs> like a meteor from the sky, you know. But was he covered for this? <laughs> oh, he was covered. Don't you worry, man. Yeah, they they paid for everything, you know, including the 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 cabana for his son who took over in uh, 1911. <laughs> you see how I segue there? There we Smooth go. Smooth up in you. Um, bullet boys reference. Go look there it we up. Go. 1980, whatever. Um. So, you know, under the son's leadership, he just steamrolled. He was continuing the growth. World War One comes along um, and, you know, a lot of claims, drains the company. And then we had, uh, does this sound so. familiar? 1918-19, the influenza pandemic. Um, That's correct. The, you know, at, the, at the time, the Spanish flu was correct. Like, basically at the I think it started in 18, like you said, um, like basically the end of the war. Yes. Just ran right into the Spanish flu. Right. So they pay out over 20 million for flu related deaths. Now, I'd be really curious, by the way, to find out how much is Prudential paid out for COVID related deaths at this point. Right. I'm um, not sure. But yeah. That's uh, something yeah, else. Let's, let, 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 let's look forward to the end of uh, the pandemic and then th then we can look into uh, fun exactly. like that, I guess. Ugh. Um. Yeah. Right. Um. So, you know, moving on here. So like, you know, 1921, we've got the, the company totals are now exceeding 5.6 billion. Um, then you've got uh, this gentleman named um, Edward D. Duffield. He becomes their next president. Uh, and this is back like in 1922. Was Pretty he the much, one that came up with Duff beer? No, he was the, the founder of the duffel bag, which everyone uses okay. to go to the gym. Yeah. So <laughs> I hope people are able to discern when I'm joking, when I'm serious. Here. Yes. You would hope, right? Um, so under his, you know, tenure in 1924, right, um, they were offering group insurance coverage to home office staff and they started group health in 1925. But then along comes the Great Depression, strangles most of the growth. You know, mortgages that were valued at 1.5 billion in 1931 bottomed at 787 million in 1935. Ouch. Um, he passes away in 1938. The company still is tremendous, tremendously successful, but it's no longer a leader in the industry. So this other guy comes in, Franklin Dolier. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. And he sees the problems that Prudential is facing. Um and, um, it, it, you know, it, especially like in terms of um, managerial issues that were going on and he never mm -hmm. succeeded in, in attending to them. So now we've got, you know, Hitler's actions in Europe and the U.S. commitment to World War II. So what Dolier did was he helped organize the New York Regional Civil Defense and he later served on the Strategic Bombing Survey Commission. Oh, wow. Um, and then what happened was in 1942, they convert to a mutual company. Um, and um, in 1928, it entered the market for major medical coverage and group credit insurance. Um, ah. 
So um, just I'll, I mean, just skipping ahead a little bit, like, you know, what they did was a Prudential started to create these regional home offices um, and they occupied like a, this striking modern office building throughout the United States. So mm -hmm. um, it, it, it really bolstered uh, these regions throughout the, the U.S., um, you know, it would be like a focal point uh, of the city, you know, dominate the city. And so they helped establish this new national presence. Um, now, you know, are, are these the offices like sort of like that, what we were used to in I recent what you're seeing today? Like, 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 you know, okay, they're on one floor of like a giant office building or, or right. maybe a couple of floors rather than the whole. It's like, oh, giant building just dedicated to Prudential. Yes, correct. And um, they implemented this policy where the, the regional offices were investing their dollars in the local community, which is a great idea. So. You know, they, they saw their sales uh, jumped. They, they opened their first office, like in uh, regional sales office in 1948 in L.A. They boosted revenue in that region by 20 percent. Um, yeah, so, you know, by the time they hit uh, whatever group life sales uh, insurance, they exceeded 589 million in 1949, which is a record for both Prudential and the industry. Um, wow. it, uh, how do you call it? Uh, with major medical insurance in the 50s, they revised the method for computing the deductible. Um, and then in 1950, they start buying common stocks. And, you know, 1964, 3% of its assets in stock um, on which it, re it realized 75 million in capital gains. So by 1962, the, the, the life insurance industry was averaging 4.4% on all the invested assets. Prudential was averaging 4.7%. So it was an additional 60 million in income for oh, the nice. company. They surpassed um, Met Metropolitan, which I imagine now is known as MetLife, as the world's largest insurance company. Mm -hmm. um, and um, let's see, you know, what happened was, uh, so now if we fast forward to the time um, during the Newark uh, riots, which you and I discussed on a previous yeah, podcast. Exactly, yeah, 1967, uh, correct? Right. They had uh, Donald McNaughton, who was um, the, the, the head of uh, Prudential at that time, and um, he addressed, you know, issues of corporate social responsibility. And after these riots, he pledged to use their resources, Prudential's resources, to help with problems of urban centers. And he gave $50 million to Newark. Um, oh, he convinced, wow. convinced the insurance industry to pledge a billion dollars to help, uh, you know, in help to U.S. cities. And that amount was later increased to $2 billion. Um, I didn't know so, they were behind that. Wow. Yeah. And, um, you know, like moving forward, like 1979, Prudential signed with Sony Corporation, PlayStation, to form <laughs> Sony Prudential, so life insurance in Japan. But I did read that they did sell that unit uh, later on. Um, what, the PlayStation? The No, the, <laughs> the Sony Prudential, <laughs> uh, which is, uh, that's, that was a good one. That, that's a good one. Um, <laughs> oh, what, what does Prudential know about the PS5? <laughs> yeah, that we need to get to the bottom of this. Like, you know, we need uh, Tomb Raider 11, and <laughs> that's, that's, that's more important than what we're discussing here. Tomb Raider 11, where Lara Croft uh, sells uh, in insurance. Right. So now, you know, um, October 1987, remember the panic that we had in the markets? That cost that, Prudential. That was, what was it? Black Monday, I think? Yeah, I think that's what it was called. Yeah. That cost them a billion dollars in paper value. A, a lot of money, right? Yeah. Um, then they, you know, an SEC investigation, and um, the problem was that six billion of these limited partnerships that were sold in the '80s to more than 100,000 investors were now valued at only a fraction of their original selling price. Mm. So that investigation concludes in 1996. Not too much later, right? Um, <laughs> regulators from 45 states. Prudential got fined 35 million. They had to pay back 10.7 million policyholders. And then the settlement was approved by a New Jersey district court judge in 1997, and it led to an eventual payment. <laughs> hold on to your hats in excess of two billion dollars. Ow! Yeah, a lot of money. Um, <laughs> hey, I didn't see any of that. Did you? No, not at no. all. And 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 I used to be a Prudential. Um, I used to have uh, auto insurance through Prudential. Oh, did you? I think I did too. You know what? But that was like very early on that. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Do, do they actually deal in auto insurance itself nowadays? You know, 
or, or, or are they specifically in the in the life and the securities type That's of thing? That's what I'm because- wondering. Like now, if they, uh, you know, I, I don't know if I came across it. If they're still, if like a, you know, one of their um, divisions is still dealing in in auto insurance. Um, I, I, I almost want to say they may have sold that off or I like spun that so off to, to someone else. Right. I, I think you're absolutely right on that. Um, yeah. So essentially, you know, they um, they they were preparing in 1999 to become a stock owned firm. Um, so they were, they divided their businesses into international institutional and retail units. Um, what do you call it? And then they, they, they wanted to focus on insurance and financial products, which leads me to believe what you're saying, Nick, right? That maybe they got out of that. Um, uh, I'd have to look that right. up and yeah, post I, I, later. I say be, be, because, uh, when I switched from Prudential Auto, it was almost like first they put me in a different auto insurance. I think it was called High Point or something mm-hmm. like that. I don't know if that was a spinoff of Prudential, but yeah. then after that, I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'll, I'll get someone else. Cause I don't even know who the hell is this high point. Yeah. Right. But, um, they, you know, did, so they wanted to focus on insurance and financial products, uh, and to go public, you know, they had to divest some of their businesses, including the healthcare operations, which it sold, uh, proposed to sell, you know, Aetna for $1 billion. So Ooh, there's wow. that story. And uh, they finally went public on April 9th, 2001. So 1998, they were ranked as the largest life insurer. Um, and uh, 55% of the company's earnings came from the sale of insurance, which grew by 21% in 1998. Uh, 45% was from their investment in securities uh, businesses. But uh, that that's just like, you know, um, I tried to, be as succinct as possible um as as far as prudentials like history um Got it. and you know today as you know yeah they're j- just a juggernaut of a, a company yes yeah well yeah like he, he they face against the x-men uh, many times you know being a juggernaut of, of uh industry there oh nice so x-men reference there man yes i'm sorry we were speaking X-Men before. <laughs> but now like yeah. I, I i know they have other things that they have you know invested in or they have their name on Mm -hmm. uh, particularly associated with i know in newark is the prudential building like i i know uh our our friend christian who was on the uh, hindenburg uh episode he works i believe not far from the prudential building oh nice and and this is why i was saying about that that model years ago if it had changed from the well you have to have your own building Mm -hmm. to the oh yeah we're, we're gonna have these satellite or these multiple offices amongst you know office buildings across the united states right because because of them you know like having this giant building in uh in newark and uh you know just to answer the question by the way nick i did look up but in short uh prudential does not have they do not sell auto insurance the only insurance company is as you i think you brought up earlier plymouth rock assurance in new jersey but they ah. operate as an, they operate as an independent company Got it. So, okay, so, so Prudential is no longer in the auto game. Right. Exactly. Got it. But um, and, um, again, but I, I, again, in, in, in other uh, uh, holdings or th- th- things with their name, isn't there something else n- n- nearby their Prudential building yes. in New York? The Prudential Center. That that is correct. Concerts and the Devils play there. Yes. Remember that the, the Devils were going to move to Nashville. Well, which is kind of strange. That was yeah, back in '95. Um, yeah, I, I I was gonna say yeah, it, it was right after the Stanley Cup win, I think, right? Yes, you're absolutely correct. Yep, that was two thousand two, two thousand three. Oh well, no, well, they, yeah, they won again, right. but ninety five yeah. was their first Cup win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think I think the, I guess what I was saying maybe it's like the rumors were started back then about them moving to Nashville, or yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what year I don't know that how far was. back like that it was. Yeah. But um. um I, I was going to say, though, uh, uh, oh, what was I was going to say with, with the... Uh, because they were playing at Continental Airlines Arena, right? Correct. Previous? Yeah, they, 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 they were the first one, I believe, to move to the Prudential Center. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the, the first of the teams. And then uh, I believe then you had Seton Hall Basketball that moved there. Right. Then you had the, uh, the at the time, New Jersey Nets uh, move uh, to the Prudential Center. You know, now the Brooklyn Nets over at the Parkway Center. But... Yep. Yeah, so, so yeah, they they they've had a few teams that have been uh, part of uh, you know that that Prudential Center. Yeah, it looks like it was back in like 2002, um, where the project was you know to build a new 18,000 seat arena, and it got funding from New York City Council. Uh, the the team was owned by Puck Holdings, you know Puck from the Real World, and um, 
And then <laughs> I, I, I thought from a, a Midsummer uh, Night's Dream, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love these names. They're like they're saying that you know, two thousand four uh, is a former Lehman Brothers executive, Jeffrey Vanderbeek. Now he was the he was uh that was James Vanderbeek's uh dad. Right? Oh yeah, I was gonna yeah. say what, what, Dawson's Creek. Uh, <laughs> yeah. the, the, the beak. Uh, I didn't realize he uh you know like he had his uh, hands in the uh, in in uh in, in in arenas. Yeah, because he was a strong proponent of uh, of the arena because he believed that it would take downtown Newark to a whole new level. Um, but they now, they finally approved it. Uh, you know, they, it was approved by the council in October of two thousand four, mm -hmm. and it, it sits on seven acres. That um arena. Where are you gonna ask, Nick? I was gonna say, like, you. How many times do you think you've been to uh, the Prudential Center? Only a handful like, of times, just for concerts. I never went there for a Devils game. Yeah, you know what? It's strange. I don't know if I've been there for a Devils game. Like I've seen the Devils, you know, banners and things mm -hmm. over there, but yeah, I don't, I don't think I've ever since they had moved from um, the Meadowlands. I don't know if I've been to a Devils game there. I think it's primarily been uh, concerts and you know, like an, an, another event. Right. Where, My boss is a huge Devils fan, and she she's gone there plenty of times. I wouldn't mind going to see a Devils game there. I mean, oh, yeah, be, definitely. won't be for a while, but <laughs> you know, oh yeah, well, when yeah. it happens, um, <laughs> definitely want to. Uh, I never knew this that that it was going to be. You know, the site was the location of a a never completed mall, the Renaissance Mall. Did you know this? Oh wow! And, like, well, I don't would even know everyone the uh, dress in uh, Renaissance garb and you know, like, <laughs> and and uh, <laughs> you know, like you know, as as you enter the mall, it goes huzzah, you know, and you know. And okay. apparently, Cory Booker too was behind. Um, that that the, I remember the, the beginnings remember of it. Um, being one of the main proponents of uh, yeah. getting that done. So, um, yeah, it looks like you know the city of Newark they pledged uh, two hundred and ten million to the construction of the arena, and then what happened was just to get the Prudential, the Prudential Financial, they purchased the naming rights to the stadium in January two thousand seven for. A pretty penny of one hundred five point three million over twenty years. Oof! Wow. Um, but yeah, that, they're paying that over twenty years, and like that's probably over twenty years. A, a drop in the bucket for them, right? Yeah. But 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 then again, I know in the news uh, recently was uh, about like uh, stadium naming rights and that. Like uh, I, I don't know if like if it was a joke or what, but uh, apparently, do, do you know like a few years ago, Bon Jovi tried to buy the Buffalo Bills? Yes, I remember that. And. Uh, you know, he he lost his bid, but apparently, um, what is it? Barstool Sports oh, is yeah. right now in, in the running for the naming rights to the new Bill Stadium. Get out! Did not know this. So Bon Jovi was, um, he was on a, a radio program, and they were discussing this, mm -hmm. and he, you know, like, you know, he was he was saying how like, oh, okay, if he actually had bought the Bills, he would have actually moved. To Buffalo to you know to you know do things for the community and that and you know not just you know I just want to buy a football team, but he's like wait but so the naming rights are up for a uh, for bid so be on the lookout Bon Jovi might actually buy the naming rights because the naming rights are so small in compared to what you just said for the Prudential Center right 104 107 what did you say 105.3 million over 20 105. years 105.3 yeah so. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think the ones for uh, Buffalo Stadium is <laughs> not like you and I have it in our back pocket to uh, do, but uh, apparently Bon Jovi may. <laughs> and they called it, they, it was nicknamed The Rock, right? The Prudential Center? Correct. Right, I, after I, I, their I corporate why. logo. Well, yeah, <laughs> we don't know why. Um, and just I'm wrapping up here um, that the arena was completed in October 2007. Construction, mm -hmm. the total cost is estimated to be 380 million. 18,000 tons of steel were used. Um, 62,000 linear feet of duct work were installed throughout the arena. I, and, wait, wait, um, duct work or duck work? You know, like, the, wait, mighty wait, duck, wait. the mighty ducks work. Yes, the mighty ducks worked there. And, um, and the Devils had to play their first nine games of the 2007-2008 NHL season on the road because there was construction going on. Uh, at Got the it. home arena. Yeah, yeah, finishing up. So, uh, but that's so pretty much, uh, you know, sums up about uh, Prudential and Prudential yeah. Center, you know. Pretty just cool. Give, like I, I said, a quick, uh, you know. Yeah, I, 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 I didn't know, uh, you know, like th that about uh, Prudential. Hmm. Um, 
what, what was going to say? Right. Yeah, I, I, I have an, a, another uh, famous company. I, I did not know this company was as big as it was. Mm -hmm. That um, started in Camden, New Jersey, and 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 what what the company I'm going to talk about is Campbell Soup. Mm -mm, good. Nice. So, uh, behind Campbell's is actually a man named Joseph A. Campbell. From um, he he was actually a a Bridgeton, New Jersey uh, resident, mm -hmm. and. Back in 1869, which was like during uh, America's Reconstruction period, like after the Civil War, um, Joseph was a fruit merchant. Well, he, he struck up a, uh, a a deal with a, an icebox manufacturer from Haddonfield, New Jersey, named uh -huh. Abraham Anderson. They, they decided to meet. And now Abraham actually had another company besides... Being an icebox manufacturer, he also had a preserving company that he had founded in 1860, the Anderson Preserving Company. Um, well, the two of them decided to come together and form a brand new partnership that they opened this plant in Camden, New Jersey, that would produce actually canned tomatoes, vegetables, jellies, condiments, minced meats. Now. Do not be confused. Minced meats are not minced meat. Minced meat is a different thing. Minced meats are basically like ground meat with no additives. Okay. And the big one, soup. Soup is good food. Yes. Yes. <laughs> It's 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 funny how we've already hit two of their uh, logos. <laughs> yeah, 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 slogans. Mm -hmm. slogans. That's the word. I said logo. Yes. Slogan. I meant slogan. Well, yeah, they 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 decided to you know form this uh, new company, mm -hmm. and um, later, like seven years after they had formed it, Anderson decided to leave the partnership, but his son, Cam <laughs> funny as it sounds, Campbell Spielman, mm -hmm. actually stayed on with. The, uh, with Joseph Campbell and um, stayed as a creative director and and had an idea for the first soup can design for, for Campbell's. But the company was now called the Joseph A. Campbell Preserve Company. Again, just like we were talking before, rolls right off the tongue. Does. Well, fast forward a couple more years. In 1882, a man named Arthur, uh, Arthur Dorrance would actually join the partnership that, you know, like um, that Anderson had left and he would actually go on to become president in 1894 when Joseph Campbell would retire. Now, just keep this name of Dorrance in mind because we're, we're going to get to him very, very shortly. Mm -hmm. In 1895, Campbell's produced the first can of ready-to-eat tomato soup. But there was something missing. Salt. No, not that. A, 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 a secret process. Okay. Um, because two years later in 1897, Arthur Darnes's nephew joined the company. His name, Dr. John T. Dorrance. Hmm. He was a chemist. Oh, here we go. Now we're getting into them. Formerly of uh, actually MIT. And um, uh, I, I forgot to write down, but um, a, a university in uh, Germany as well. Mm -hmm. In 1897, Dr. Torrance, uh, not Torrance, Dorrance, invented a new formula for condensed soup. And what he did was he had the quantity of the heaviest ingredient in soup, water. Mm. So, the, the thing Campbell's, be, you know, became very known uh, over the years for, there are cans of condensed soup. Right. You know, the, 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 the little cans of condensed soup. Yeah, you have... Dr. John T. Darns to thank for that. Hmm. 
and when he created these, he created five different varieties of condensed soup, including their favorite there, tomato. Again, tomato was one of the main things that Joseph Campbell sold as a fruit merchant. Right. Well, uh, Dr. Dorrance actually also be, would become the president later um, in uh, 1914 until his death in 1930. But go going back to 1897, or actually the next year, 1898, one of Campbell's executives, his name was Herberton Williams, attended a college football game and for all those that are into college football, go to one of our first episodes, and we talked about the first college football game, uh, intercollegiate football game, was played in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. But this game that uh, Herberton Williams went to was the Cornell Penn football game, and going to that game gave him an idea. Mm -hmm. Do you want to take a guess at what the idea was? He goes to a college football game. Yeah. And he gets an idea. Yep. They're going to sell Campbell's soup at college football games during cold games. That, that would be cool. But I, I think that actually that type of thing comes much later. Uh, <laughs> I'm at a loss. So please, please well, tell us the secret. Well, OK. In, in, in our episode, when we talked about the, the first uh, intercollegiate game between Rutgers and Princeton, mm -hmm. We, we talked about how, like, the, the, the colors of the football oh. jerseys, you know. So red and white for Campbell's. Yeah. The, the Cornell team had these cool red and white uniform colors. Which really, like. That like stood out. out. Yes, right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Williams came back to Campbell's and suggested, hey, why don't we use these colors on the soup can labels? Mm -hmm. And hence our favorite soup can label. <laughs> <laughs> it takes place uh, with, with the red and white. Oh, that's fascinating. I did not know that. How they, how I, it originated, I, I did not you know, know that either until, mm -hmm. until did this uh, research. And then there was one other um, main part of that label that was missing, though. Because in 1900, mm -hmm. Campbell's took part in the Paris Exposition. And being part of that exposition, they won a medal for product excellence. And you know where they put that medal? On the front of the soup can. Basically, on the label of the soup can. Yep. That right, right in the center. So you have the red, uh, red up top, the white down below, and in the middle was that medal. Lovely. That medal was from the 1900 Paris Exposition <laughs> for product excellence. Huh. So, um, what you call it? Th 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 there was something though that Campbell's needed to do though. Mm -hmm. Um, they 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 really needed to advertise more. So, in 1904, a Philadelphia artist named Grace Dayton mm -hmm. created series uh, a series of sketches for like street card ads for for Campbell's soup. Okay. You, you want to guess what was on these ads? Uh, the soup can? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. no not, not necessarily. Well, I think the soup can was part of you know, the ad, but there was mm -hmm. something else as part of these ads. I'm not sure. Well, th there were these figures, these l l little chubby figures with round faces, wide oh. set eyes, and a yes. pug nose. Mm -hmm. Grace Dayton created the Campbell Soup Kids okay. there we <laughs> in go. 1904. And then they actually launched their first national advertising campaign the following year. Now that they had a great product, they had a good, a good label, and they actually had a, 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 a good, uh, good, good uh, advertising logo there also with you know, the Campbell Soup Kids, mm -hmm. now they're in national advertising and good housekeeping. And by 1911, Campbell Soups are now distributed nationally. Mm. 
Now, this next part, by the way, the, thank you, Christopher Hewitt. You rock as well. I, 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 I just, uh, <laughs> I just saw his uh, message there that, mm -hmm. that we rock. Or, or maybe, he was, maybe he was talking about the rock in, in, uh, in Newark there. <laughs> you rock. God dang it. Go on. <laughs> Or, or, or is it We Rock? Uh, who, who is that? Um, Queen. We'll rock you. No, not We Will Rock You. No, no. Uh, no. We Rock. Uh, That's Dio. Dio, thank you. Who also Ronnie played James Dio. in New Jersey. Go on. Now, remember I said, though, when I started to hear about Campbell's, I didn't realize how big a freaking company this is. Because Campbell's got big over the years from acquisitions. And I did not know you're going to be surprised mm -hmm. by the brands that Campbell's acquired that I had no idea that these were Campbell's brands. Please, rattle them off so I may well, react accordingly. The first one in 1915, their first acquisition mm -hmm. was a canned soup and pasta company out of Jersey City. Do you know who that was? Chef Boyardee. Close. Canned pasta, huh? What, what's my name? Nick Franco. Franco American. Oh, okay. Yeah, Franco American. Franco American, yep. Yeah, now Franco American, as I said, was a Jersey City actual uh, company. So another uh, company made in Jersey. Yep. Um, by Alphonse Bardu and his sons. You said Alphonse Barbiero. What, what is that? Alphonse who? But but Bardot. Oh, B A A R D O T. Gotcha. Um. Yeah, you, you, you know why it was called Franco American? No. I I thought maybe the founder was last name Franco. Uh, somebody they knew, you know, named Franco or something. Yep. No, Alphonse Bardo and his sons were from France. Oh, well, Franco dash American. There you go. Okay. <laughs> I never knew that until today. <laughs> Clarity. <laughs> and now, come 1922, mm -hmm. another big change is made to the Campbell's company. They 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 go from the. The, the, the Joseph, what was it? The Joseph A. Campbell Preserve Company mm -hmm. and changed to the Campbell Soup Company. They, they took soup as their middle name. A good choice. Yes, a, a very good choice. I, I, I think it works. But uh, another big thing happened in 1931 for the Campbell's Company. Now, already... They were, um, what you call advertising nationally. They were in good housekeeping, and and now, you know, uh, promoting Campbell's soup through other ads. But one thing had to be uh, conquered. There, they hadn't gone on the radio yet. So in 1931, they got their first radio advertisement. And they had to come up with a jingle. Want to guess what that was? What the jingle was? Yep. It was mm -mm good. Bingo. Yes. Mm -mm good goes all the way back to 1931. Mm -hmm. The first radio jingle for, for the Campbell Soup Company was mm -mm good. Now, in 1934, Campbell actually introduced two of its most popular soups. Those soups would be cream of mushroom mm -hmm. and chicken noodle. I thought chicken noodle was something that they started with, but apparently I guess they were primarily vegetable-based soups oh, to begin okay. with. So the first chicken noodle soup was 1934 from Campbell's. Now, the next one is kind of fun because th th this ties into one of uh, – uh, KP and LP Burke's uh, American Loser uh, podcasts mm -hmm. because in 1938 Mercury Theater on the air had their radio program and they presented War of the Worlds which caused a bit of a panic. Oh, totally. 
Was that Ray yeah. Brad? No, um, what's his name? Orson Welles. Orson Welles. Yeah, that's oh. right. Well, in 1938, after the Mercury Theater on air radio program did that, um, a new sponsor came in, mm-hmm. Campbell's. And it became Orson Welles' Campbell Playhouse, which was co-produced actually by Orson Welles and <laughs> and the, the late great John Houseman. Oh, wow. Yeah. Paper something was the show. John Houseman. Uh, well, uh, uh, what was that? The paper chase? Yeah, that was it. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, and I, I think uh, wasn't he also the commercial for um, we we make money the old fashioned way, we earn it. I think so. That? I think that I think that was Houseman as well. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. So now, Campbell's has all this national advertisement. They have uh, radio jingles, and they have their own sponsored radio program. <laughs> hmm. So, so now, 1941 comes along, and they introduce the Campbell's Test Kitchen. Do you know what that is? No, just what is it, like uh, creating new soups? Not exactly. Mm-hmm. It's, it's actually where they take their condensed soups and create other recipes from them. Okay. And th- this, it, it's, it's still going to today. You, you can see some of the recipes on their cans, mm-hmm. um, including like the, the green bean casserole bake, like with the cream of mushroom soup that mm-hmm. you know, you know, uh, I think it's cream of mushroom soup, uh, the French's uh, onions and um, yeah, green beans. So the, it, the Campbell's test, test Kitchen premieres in 1941. Okay. Now, after the war, in 1948, Campbell's decides to make its second acquisition. You know what? And, yeah. I should have had a V8 because Campbell's did. V8 vegetable juice was bought from the VA, uh, V8 vegetable juice brand of Chicago, Illinois. Awesome. Yeah. So now they have their soups. They have the Franco-American pastas in cans. Well, Franco-American also made things like gravies. Um, And now they have vegetable juices. So uh, fast forward a couple more years. In 1951, they actually began TV advertising and sponsored other programs like Lassie and Peter Pan. Now, back then, with Campbell's growing the way it was, wouldn't it be cool to own a part of Campbell's? You're asking a question. Yeah, yeah, that 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 that, that is a question. Is it repeat that. That. Yeah, like with Campbell's growing the way it is, mm-hmm. wouldn't it be cool to have owned a part of Campbell's? Oh, you well, absolutely would have. Yeah. Well, in 1954, you could because they went public on the New York oh. Stock Exchange. <laughs> Should I have bought like a lot of shares? I, I think those shares would be mm-mm good. I don't know what they're trading at now, but go ahead. I, that, that I don't know. I, mm-hmm. I, I, I didn't look up the uh, the, the latest uh, numbers. Um, 1955, though, they made their next acquisition. Mm-hmm. The C.A. Swanson & Sons Company of Omaha, Nebraska, which made broths, TV dinners, and pot pies. Now, they, they would sell off the frozen food portion of that to Pinnacle Foods in 1998 or to the company that would become Pinnacle Foods. Mm -hmm. But now we got soups. We got canned pasta. We got uh, um, vegetable juice. We we, we got gravy. We got broth now. David Lee broth. Yes, David Lee broth. Go on. In 1957, big move. Campbell's goes worldwide as uh-huh. it introduces its international division. So now Campbell's is not this little company in uh, Camden, New Jersey anymore. They're the international company in Camden, New Jersey. Right. Now, 1961, get ready to be hungry. Okay. Because Pepperidge Farm delivers. Delivers right to Campbell's. 
because Campbell's acquired the Pepperidge Farm Company, makers of bread, those uh, yummy Milano cookies. Yeah, I've got some Pepperidge Farm bread up in the fridge right now, in fact. Nice. Yep. And, and you, you know what? The year after Campbell's bought them, they mm -hmm. decided to, to to expand into crackers. These, okay. these these little crackers that were that were shaped like little fish. Goldfish. Uh, called, goldfish. Yes. My God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so now Campbell's has soups, broths, gravies, canned pasta, <laughs> uh, ve ve vegetable juices, uh, cookies, bread, and goldfish crackers. Wow. But 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 that is not enough because in 1962, an artist by the name of, can you guess? Andy Warhol. There we go. He 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 took the familiar look of the Campbell soup can, mm -hmm. and integrated it into a series of pop art that he created. Uh, some silk screens that he uh, he would return to on and off through the 60s and 70s. Now, the, the original batch that he created were actual accurate representations of the Campbell's cans. Hmm. But as he progressed, it became a little more surrealistic, changed around the, uh, the colors, became like negative reversed color schemes and other uh, techniques. Now, you, you know how iconic those, those uh, Campbell's uh, pieces of art from uh, Warhol uh, are, right? Yes, very much so. One piece in particular called Small Torn Campbell Soup Can mm -hmm. from 1962 in the year 2006 commanded a price of, do you want to take a guess how much that, that Campbell Soup Can piece of art from Andy Warhol sold for at auction? I'm going to say about $78 million, or am I a little too low? Oh, uh, actually, you're too high. But too high. Yeah, Fif yeah. Fifty million or less. No, okay, no, you're you're still too high. But I, I, I thought just for a soup can, it, it was a bit much. But uh, it was eleven point eight million at That's auction. Insane. Okay. For one soup can, created by Eddie Warhol. <laughs> mm. Now, in honor of uh, Mr. Warhol, in two thousand four, Campbell's released a limited edition series of Warhol inspired. Uh, soup labels for their condensed soups, mm -hmm. and and again they re-released it in 2012, like or a new line of them, marking the 50th anniversary of Warhol's original art. Hmm. So it, it was it was pretty cool. Now you you were talking about earlier, it's like um Campbell's you know uh, providing soups to uh, the football game. Well, you you were a little off in years, but in 1965, they created their food service division to serve restaurants and other related establishments such as stadiums and such for for their foods. And that same year, their one line, Franco-American, introduced another pasta line. Want to guess what that was? Another pasta line, um, Borelli. Nope, no, 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 not not like that. Franco American just created another pasta. Uh oh, I don't know. Right? Like, I mean, a, uh, a type of pasta, or yeah, it has something to do with their shape, at least. Elbow macaroni, like elbow macaroni shape. <laughs> no, it was. Uh oh, spaghettios. Oh, okay. 1965 is when so obvious Franco American, you know, through Campbell's released SpaghettiOs. Mm -hmm. Now I I remember what year, years ago, like when I was a uh, Boy Scout. Yep. When we, when, we, when we would go to uh, winter camp at Nobi Bosco, the 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 uh, the filming site for Camp Crystal Lake in uh Friday in uh, Friday the thirteenth. The 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 Friday night we would go up. The thing what we would eat is spaghettios. We, I've had we, them. Yes, and 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 we we uh, came to the conclusion that if you left them in their bowl, mm -hmm. they they just reproduce. Oh my god! Okay. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I I think they just asexually just like 
just created more SpaghettiOs in your bowl. I believe you. So, so moving on, next year, this one should be near and dear to your heart. Mm -hmm. In 1966, Campbell's acquired the North American distribution rights to Belgian chocolate maker Godiva. Very nice. And in 1974, Campbell's would purchase Godiva. I did not know Godiva chocolate was owned by Campbell Soup. Was owned by Campbell Soup Corporation. Yeah, I had no idea. But they, they did sell them off in 2008 to uh, Yiditz Holding. Oh, okay. But for many I years, they, I did not uh, know that they were nope. a Campbell Soup Corporation product. Did not know either. If you put a Campbell soup can next to a box of Godiva chocolates, I would have not known that there was an actual relationship. Mm. <laughs> That's funny. In, in 1970, one of my favorite things from Campbell's <coughs> is, is, got launched. Another soup. You know which one? By Campbell's, huh? Yep. Pumpkin soup. No, 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 not not like a flavor of soup. A, a, another line, another division of soup. Another division of soup. I don't they're, know. They're, like, they're, they were a little heartier. Yeah, more. Oh, uh, chunky soup. Chunky soup. Nineteen seventy. Yeah. Uh, Campbell's launched Chunky Soup, which became the official sponsor of the NFL since nineteen ninety seven. Oh, awesome! Yes, when when you think of soup and you think of the NFL, think Chunky. Like in, 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 in 78, Campbell's acquired Vlasic. <laughs> oh, the pickle company. Makers of pickles, condiments, relishes, and such. But they sold off Vlasic in 1998 along with the frozen food uh, section of their um, Swanson uh, products to the company that would become Pinnacle Foods. Mm. But again, I did not know Vlasic for 20 years was a Campbell's Soup uh, Corporation company. No, didn't know that either. Yeah. Well, let, let, let's spin off another division, shall we? In um, 1981, a, a chef for Campbell's had a favorite family recipe for pasta sauce. Take a shot at what brand got created in 1981? Prego. Bingo! <laughs> Prego Pasta is a Campbell Soup Corporation mm -hmm. based on one of their chef's uh, family recipes. So, yes, the Prego Pasta sauces ca ca came to life at that point. Mm -hmm. Now, along the way, they, they would um, create some other soup divisions such as home cooking soups or uh, Campbell's home style soups. That's what it be we become. That was uh, introduced in 83. Um, and in 1990, the 20 billionth can of condensed tomato soup was produced. Can you picture 20 billion cans of tomato soup? No. Well, they, that's a lot of soup. That's a lot of soup. Yeah, and and still going. Mm. And in the same year, they introduced a new flavor which became the most successful new condensed soup in 55 years. In 1990, they introduced cream of broccoli. Oh, okay. Again, the different divisions of soups that they created in 1991, they created the Healthy Request line of soups. Now, the Healthy Request ones are the ones, it, it, it looks like the main label of the, uh, the Campbell soups, but it has that little Healthy Request uh, labeling on it. Mm-hmm. So less sodium, less fat. But in 1995, Campbell's decides to branch out again and acquires Pace Foods, makers of Mexican sauces and salsa. Okay. No other. So, so now, soup, gravy, uh, uh, canned spaghetti, <laughs> spaghetti sauce, mm -hmm. <laughs> vegetable drinks. Um, <laughs> for 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 a while, you know, you, you had classic foods and and Godiva chocolates, and now salsa. Wow, they get around. Yeah, well, they got bigger in 1997. 
when they purchased Arnott's of Australia, a large biscuit manufacturer. Mm. But um, last year, they sold off the Arnott's line. Oh. Yes, wah-wah. 1998, Campbell's acquired Fortune Foods. It's like fortune without the E. Mm -hmm. Who made stockpot soups, a leader in refrigerated soups. So now you had your canned, condensed. Now, now you actually had refrigerated soups for Campbell's. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and the same year, Campbell's also introduced the first Campbell's soup to go, microwavable soup. Nice. And that, you know, the, the microwavable container. Mm -hmm. And 2000, you know, this is where it gets like a, a, a little uh, fuzzy for me because they have, you know, like, you know, the Campbell's to go, but then they had in 2000, ready to serve with the pop top lid. Mm -hmm. And 2002, soup at hand. It's like, wait, which which one is which? I'm, I'm, I'm confused at this the, these soup lines. Hmm. But uh, 2000, we're going to jump a little bit to 2009. Uh, Eke uh, Panisse was acquired under Pepperidge Farm line. So now they had not only the regular Pepperidge Farm breads, but they had artisan breads and deli flats and low calorie sandwich rolls. Mm -hmm. So, so, so more under uh, under the uh, Campbell's line. Now a big to do was done in. 2010 they changed their label what yes Campbell's changed their label okay. they, they basically changed the label just to make some more space for actual images of the soup itself all right so you could actually see the soup so it wasn't just the word tomato soup you you saw a bowl of tomato soup so that that happened in uh, 2010. So you know, some may call it sacrilege, but yeah, I guess progress. You know, good good to know what the actual soup is going to look like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 2012, they acquired Bolt House Farms, who made uh, premium juices, smoothies, protein shakes, salad dressings, and cafe beverages. But then That's they sold it. them off last year. <laughs> oh yeah, because I see their stuff in Target, Bolt House. Yep. You know. Yeah, yeah, but they're no longer a Campbell's product. Okay. But they decided to go into uh, children's food in 2013 when they mm -hmm. bought Plum Organics, a leading provider of uh, organic foods for uh, and snacks for babies, toddlers, and children. Wow. But, yeah, Campbell's grows bigger. 2015, they got Garden Fresh Gourmet. Salsas, hummus, dips, and tortilla chips. Mm. But they sold that one off last year as well. <laughs> okay. A lot of selling. Yeah. So, you know, they, they, they grow and then they, they, they shrink a little yeah. as they go along here. But uh, Campbell's acquired Pacific Foods, like an organic soup maker, um, also maker of broths and plant-based beverages and meals in 2017. Mm -hmm. But 2018 was the big one, and I did not freaking know this one right in 2018 campbell's acquired snyder's lance they make pretzels know? yeah Sn yeah snyder's of hanover pretzels mm -hmm. you, you know what else um not sure well snyder's lance also makes cape cod chips kettle chips lance the uh the cheese uh, uh cracker snack pop secret emerald nuts and late july <laughs> Those are all Campbell's brands now. Wow. Did not know. They bought Snyder's Lance for $4.87 billion in cash. Wow. The largest deal in Campbell's history. Yeah, that's a lot of money. Oh, yeah. And last year, they celebrated their 150th anniversary. Incredible. But now, Campbell's. You know, they no longer manufacture any of the soups or any of their other products in Camden, New Jersey, but mm -hmm. they, their world headquarters is still there in Camden, and they still give back to the community to, to today. Good. Yeah, I, I remember back years ago also going to New Jersey Nets games at the Meadowlands, mm -hmm. and 
the cheerleaders for the Nets were the Campbell Soup Dancers. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes for, for your useless piece of information today, yes, the Campbell Soup Dancers were the New Jersey Nets cheerleaders back oh. in, I believe, uh, early 90s. Okay. So, from Campbell's, it's time to play Jersey, Not Jersey, New Jersey Founded Company Edition. As Ming says, the game that's sweeping the nation. That is correct. Mm-hmm. Oh, and b- by the way, also uh, a shout out to uh, Stuart Greenberg. Uh, yeah. <laughs> earlier on, when, when we had that little uh, hiccup where it we switched over to uh, 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 okay, not okay, uh, he, he said, if you're going to switch, go to Stu in it. <laughs> and, and for all those that listen to our program, please go to Stu in it uh, and, and listen to Stu's uh, podcast. A yes. great podcast. It sure is. In fact, I think uh, I think it was the last episode or the episode before. His son Max was actually the person doing the interviewing. Nice. So, Jersey, not Jersey, New Jersey founded company edition. First company, ADP, the payroll company. Okay. I'm fairly convinced that this is definitely. I'm guessing if they're in Jersey or not Jersey, or started in Jersey. Yes. Right. I, I'm going to say definitely in Jersey. ADP Payroll was founded in 1949 in Patterson, New Jersey. There you go. Yes. And for all those interested, uh, if you ever saw the movie Catch Me If You Can with Frank Abagnale, uh, Frank Abagnale Jr., um, mm-hmm. he has actually something to do with uh, ADP Payroll and the watermarks on your checks, on your payroll checks, so they don't get forged. <laughs> Number trivia. two, you know the plant was in New Jersey, but Marcal paper products and recycled paper products. Hmm. Jersey or not Jersey? I'm going to say not in Jersey. They have a plant in Jersey, but are not um, from originally from Jersey. Okay. Marcal paper products and recycled paper products founded by an Italian immigrant in 1932. In the town of East Patterson, ah. later, called, later called Elmwood Park, New Jersey. So where they wow. actually had their plant for those decades that unfortunately burned down a couple years ago, but has mm-hmm. been rebuilt. Yeah. It, it's in Jersey. That's Jersey. Okay. Okay. Here we go. BD. Shorthand for Becton Dickinson. Yes. The company that, that makes company. medical equipment, such as I'm, thermometers and other things such as that. I'm going to say they are from New Jersey. Becton Dickinson, founded in 1897 by Maxwell Becton and Fairley Dickinson. There we go. Founded in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now headquartered in Franklin Lakes. Nice. Oh, our friend uh, Krista, uh, Krista Ryerson uh, just posted about the uh, Markal fire. It was something, uh, you know, it, it, she hasn't been by there in a long time. But, yeah, she, she remembers that one. Huh. It's like, like if, you, if you ever traveled uh, east-west Route 80, or, or west-east, I should say, Route 80, uh, um, you, you, you would have seen it. <laughs> yeah, c- coming through Jersey. Mm-hmm. All right. Benjamin Moore, the paint people. Jersey or not Jersey? I am going to say that that they're not Jersey. They're probably in New England somewhere, maybe. Okay. Benjamin Moore, now headquartered in Montvale, New Jersey, was oh, founded in that. A- That's near found- where my parents were. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Founded in 1883 in Brooklyn, New York. Get. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm okay. I, I got it. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you're right. Well, okay. yeah, they, they weren't New England, but yeah, they were. They were no, not England. right. <laughs> Never mind. I'm having a whatever. In <laughs> you're having a senior moment. Yes, exactly. Because last Sunday was Pete's uh, birthday. Yep. Sure was. <laughs> Good times. Yes. How about Nabisco? Maker of biscuits, cookies, and other yummy things so like that. So now Nabisco, I believe, had their factory on 208, Nick. Am I right on that? Yeah, th- that was one of their factories, yes. Right. 
Yes, and, uh, and I, I used to work right near that factory. So particularly in um I used to pass it in, all the time. In like September, October, mm -hmm. it used to smell delicious. Yes. Passing by that because that's when they make Oh, by the way, Christopher uh, wishes you a belated happy birthday. Oh, thank um, you. Uh, in September, October, Nabisco was making Mallow Mars, and oh God, what, what was did the air smell uh, delicious? It did. I, I remember like passing it, and it, it was uh, amazing. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. But Nabisco, Jersey or not Jersey? I am going out on a limb here and saying I am hmm, I'm probably, probably going to come back to bite me. I'm going to say not Jersey. Well, this one's a little fuzzy. Tricky situation. Although the, you know, the National Biscuit Company was formed from multiple companies from New York, Massachusetts, and Jersey, mm -hmm. Nabisco was founded in 1898 in East Hanover Township, New Jersey. Oh, damn it. You know, my mind kept saying like, I should say Jersey, but that, that was like a trick question because, like I said, I, passing that Nabisco plane all the time, like, ah, oh, they've got to be, you know, started in Jersey, but I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, he, 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 here's one for the Times. Quest Diagnostic Clinical Labs. All right. Well, they got labs, like, everywhere here in Jersey. Oh, yeah. Quest Diagnostics, man. I'm gonna say right off the bat, it's in Jer it's a Jersey uh, start for them. Now, New Jersey, we are one of our primary uh, industries in New Jersey mm -hmm. is the pharmaceutical industry. That's true. Like Johnson and Johnson, I believe is here. Pfizer, I think is here too. Right? Yeah. Th th there's there's many <sighs> pharmaceutical companies cr uh, currently located in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. But Quest Diagnostics Connecticut. Was, founded, was founded in 1967 in New York City, New York. <laughs> oh, damn it. Okay. But they are currently headquartered in Secaucus, New Jersey. All right. I'll take that. Ah, oh, let's see. Uh, uh, Krista wants to know, did we talk about the Taylor Provisions Company? Uh, no, we did not talk about them. Uh, possibly on a uh, l later episode. I, I'm going to throw you a, a curveball company here. This is one that most people don't know, but it's an actual cool company. And if you look it up, mm -hmm. the Accurate Box Company, they are a company that makes corrugated boxes with graphics, like what you see on all your cereals and cookies and crackers and all the other packaged goods that you buy at the grocery store. Okay. Accurate Box Company. Jersey or not Jersey? No. This one, I, I guarantee I'm going to get. It's in New Jersey, is it not? They were founded in 1944 in Newark, New Jersey. Yeah. I, I believe they are currently located at a larger facility in Patterson. Awesome. All right. You need to rent a car? Why, why not call Hertz? Car rentals. Hertz car rentals. Hertz. Hurts. Jersey or not Jersey? I say not Jersey. And by saying that, Hertz was founded in 1918 in Chicago. You, you are correct, Pete. Yeah. <laughs> Although they used to be headquartered for many years in Park in Ridge, New Jersey. Get out. Park Ridge. That's another area that it was by where I grew up. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, Krista actually just posted also the company that makes bubble wrap is from Jersey as well. Oh, did not know very, that. Very cool. All right. Of, yes. Now, you mentioned them before, but let's see. Are they Jersey or not Jersey? Mm -hmm. Johnson & Johnson, maker of medical devices, All right. ph pharma, and consumer packaged goods. Were they founded in New Jersey? Jersey or not Jersey? Ah, this one. I got to really think about this one. I am going to say, yes, they are uh, founded in Jersey. And you are correct. Nice. Founded by, founded in 1886 in New Brunswick, New Jersey by Robert Wood Johnson, 
Sound oh, wow. familiar? That hospital in, in, in yeah in, in in New Jersey and the medical school, uh, and his brothers. And to finish us off, we're going to bed, bath, and beyond. <laughs> the retail domestic merchandise store. Jersey or not Jersey? I feel like I read this a long time ago. Some of their beginnings. Um, and I'm, hmm, I want to lean toward that. They were founded in New Jersey. I could okay. be wrong on this though, or at least at the very least, uh, they're an East coast operation. Okay. Well, they are an East coast operation. Oh, but there's and, a but coming, isn't there? And they were, and they were founded in 1971 on the East coast in yeah, Springfield, yeah. New Jersey. Yes. Oh, get out. <laughs> awesome. All right. Yes, I so thought I, thought I was going to get this one wrong. Yes, so there are many, many, many companies that have been founded in New Jersey. That's, wow, that's it's, some real it's big names too. <laughs> I'm saying very some notable names there that you threw yeah. out in that. Yeah, and and some a, a couple that you would think would be Jersey but aren't, like Quest. Mm -hmm. So, Break I, in um, today. What's that? That was that was great. Uh, the research you did there for those. Uh, all that great game. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, and and, and thank you for doing the research on Prudential because you know, absolutely, I, I, I need to get a piece of the rock. <laughs> get your hammer and chisel. <laughs> yes, but um, you know, if if you enjoy uh, what exit uh, Jersey stories, please tell your friends. Uh, please like, subscribe. Yes, we are on all, all the uh, related podcast apps. Um, if you want to create your own um, your own podcast. Please go to our shared universe studios, um, created by Mr. Ming Chen and Michael Zapsik. Uh, they they will be happy to get you started, and you you, you too could uh, have Bane engineer your show. I mean, that's not too shabby. Think about what a celebrity he is. Yes, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah. So yeah, you know, please like, subscribe, or also we you know, we're uh, uh, what exit podcast at gmail.com if you've got uh, s s something you want to uh, tell us if uh, if something we said is wrong or uh, hey, you just want to you just want to chat again please you know when we do these live things please chat along the, like our friends uh, Krista Christopher Stewart um, I know our friend um, fr from Russia did not join us today but um, he'll catch up with us later yeah I I'm, I'm sure I was going to say we started a little late so you mm -hmm. know I, I know it's late for him over there yeah, but um, but again, if you want to start your own podcast, please, please do. But please f f follow what exit Jersey stories. If you have any good ideas f for um show subject, ideas, yeah, yeah. And what well, be, being that it is October, we are going to uh, get into some uh, uh some, some spookier things uh, to to come. Yes. Uh, later in this month, haunted New Jersey. Yes, haunted, weird, and 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 wild and. And, and dangerous at times, New mm -hmm. Jersey. But thank you all for listening. For What Exit Jersey Stories, I've been Nick Franco. And I'm Pete Riario. And out there somewhere is Bane. So thank you, everyone. <laughs> good, good night. night.